Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can make a simple 2D enemy patrol on a platform paired with animations and all the cool functionality you're looking for as well as some cool editor functionality to make it easier to set up patrols. If you want the script from today's video it is now available on my Patreon along with many others from this channel which you can find from the link in my description. Now let's get started. So in this scene as you can see I have a very menacing enemy here and this enemy includes an animator, a box collider 2D and a rigid body 2D which is set to dynamic, has collision detection set to continuous, an interpolate mode to interpolate, and importantly, we have a constraint set, which is our rotation. The two animations I have on this enemy is an idle animation and then an enemy run. Now in this video, we're just gonna be using this run animation, but I also have this idle animation as a little bit of bonus info at the end. So what we wanna do is create two points at either end of this platform and have our enemy run towards one end, reach the end, and then go to the other side and just do this endlessly. And we wanna have animations paired to this and also have our enemy facing the way it should be. So the first thing we're gonna do is create two points we want our enemy to be at. So I'm gonna right click, create empty, and then just type in point A, and then just control D to duplicate and do point B. I'm gonna drag point B to here, point A to here, and for now, that is that. Obviously, these are a little bit hard to see like this. We can't actually see where they are. We're gonna make this way easier in script shortly. But for now, let's focus on what we need to do to set up in the editor. So now we need to pull up an animator tab. So let's go to window, animation, animator, and it will bring up this tab right here. And you can see my two enemy animations. And quite simply, you can just use one animation, a run animation if you want, and you can simply set your entry default state to your enemy run. I'm gonna do it slightly different. So my default state is set to my idle animation. And then from my idle, I'm gonna make a transition to my enemy run and then in this transition state let's disable exit time add no transition duration and we're going to add a condition and that condition is going to be a boolean which we're going to call is running just like that so to transition from idle to run we're going to set is running to true and then we're going to do the opposite on the other side disable exit time no transition duration and set is running to false. And for now, that is all we need to do in the editor. Now we can just create a script and get into the code. So let's go to our enemy, add component, and then let's type in enemy patrol, and then open this up in Visual Studio. So first things first, let's get some references out of the way. So we're gonna grab two references, one for each of our points we created. So let's do public game object point A, and then another one for public game object point B. Next, we're gonna grab a reference to our rigid body, because that is how we're gonna move this enemy. So we can do private rigid body 2D, RB. We can grab a reference to our animator. So let's do private animator anim. And also let's create a new transform and we can call this private transform current point. So there is a few more variables we need to add, but for now, this is gonna be fine to get us started. So now in our start function, let's assign our variables. So let's do RB equals get component rigid body 2D. We can then assign our animator in the same way. Let's set our current point equal to our point B dot transform just so it has an initial start point. And then from here, we can automatically change this. And finally, let's use anim.setsBall, and we're gonna set is running equal to true. And that's the Boolean we made earlier, which is gonna enable our running animation. So we're gonna set this in the start function here, and then we can have that running. And this would just do the same functionality as it would if we just had one animation. But this means later down the line, if you wanted to, you could have points where once our enemy reached a point, it could sit there in an idle animation for two seconds before moving on. This is not gonna be in this video, but I'm gonna give you a brief explanation on how we could do that. And if this is something that you guys wanna see, feel free to let me know in the comments. But now we've got this out of the way, let's go to our update function. And right off the bat, let's create a new point called vector2 point, and let's set this to our current point dot position minus transform dot position. What this is gonna do is give us a direction that our enemy wants to go towards, which is gonna be in the direction of the current point. So now we're gonna initially check if our current point is equal to point B dot transform, which at the moment is true because we set this to true in our start function. Then we're gonna access the rigid body of our enemy, more specifically the velocity. And we're gonna set this to a new vector two. And for the X, we're gonna set this to a float we haven't made yet. We're gonna set it to speed. And then for the Y, we can just set this to zero as we don't wanna move this enemy on the Y. So let's go to the top, create a public float and call it speed. And then we can just do else. So what this is basically saying is if current point is not point B, which is point A or something else, then we set rb.velocity equal to new vector two. But this time it's gonna be minus speed because we want it to go in the other direction. So in this case, because speed is a positive value, that means our enemy is going to be going right. So your point B needs to be the point on the right and point A needs to be the point on the left. As long as you are fully aware of the direction your enemy is going in. So now back in our editor, let's go to our enemy here. And we have a few variables down here. I'm gonna set the speed to two and then 
then I'm going to drag in point A to our A slot and point B to our B slot. And now if we press play, our enemy should move to the right, which it does. But unfortunately, it does not stop and will slowly float off screen, which is not quite what we want but it is an improvement. So at the moment, this piece of code is completely redundant because we have no way of setting our current point to point A. So that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna use a new if statement. We're gonna check if vector two, we're using the distance function and we're gonna check for the distance between our enemy's position and the current points position. So if the distance between these two variables is smaller than 0.5F and our current point is equal to point B. So we use this extra bit just to specify what point we're going to. So what this means is if our enemy has reached the current point and the current point is B, we're gonna set the current point to be A. So current point is now equal to point A dot transform. So what this means is we can just use an empty game object and just add a little bit of distance so the player doesn't have to touch exactly the game object. It can touch a little radius around it. So we can be a little bit more fluid with where we put our patrol points, which for me just adds a little bit extra efficiency. And it means we don't need to have extra box colliders and things like that. So we've done this on one side, we need to do it on the other now. So I'm gonna copy and paste this code and I'm just gonna swap point B for point A here and then point A for point B. And now if I test this out, you can see we go from one side and then we actually flip and go to the other. And now we will do this infinitely. So for some of you who don't want to flip your character or don't have animations or a sprite or anything like that, you may be done there, but hold on just one second. I've got one extra thing to show you that can really help speed up your workflow. So obviously we have these two points here, but they're very hard to visualize. And of course we could use icons up here. Again, I'm not a big fan. So let's go one step above and we're gonna use something called gizmos. So let's create a new function. So I'm gonna use private void on draw gizmos and gizmos are a visualization tool. That means we can draw certain spheres and wires and cubes that we can see in the editor live. So what I'm gonna do is create two wire spheres around each point that we have. And I'm also gonna set their radius to be 0.5F. What this means is we can see the exact point on the line when our enemy is gonna to switch to the other side as we have that value here. So let's do gizmos.draw wire sphere. And what this is asking for is a vector three, which we have. So it's gonna be our points a dot transform dot position. And then it's looking for a radius, which we can just set to 0.5 f we can do the same again for point b with the same radius and back in our editor you can see exactly this so now without these points selected you can see these points and when we reach this point so when this exact center of our enemy reaches this line that is when it's going to switch but i'm going to go one higher just to make your life even easier and we're going to get a line in between these points so you can roughly see the patrol path so let's do gizmos dot draw line points a dot transform dot position point b dot transform dot position. And now you can see we have this absolutely glorious line in between our two points. And if we were to drag point A up, this line will go with it, which is really great. And as you can see, there's no box colliders involved or anything like that. So to wrap this video up, let's get our enemy sprite to flip so it's facing the right direction. So let's create a private function down here, call it flip, so private void flip. We're gonna use this flip to multiply our scale and the X axes by minus one because one times minus one is minus one and minus one times minus one is one. So that means we're always gonna flip regardless of what our scale is at the time. So we can just do vector three local scale is equal to our transform dot local scale. And the reason we do this is because we cannot directly reference a particular axis from our transform local scale. So we have to create a local variable for it first access our x axes from this variable and then basically combine the two. So now we have this local scale, let's do local scale dot x times and equal to minus one. So we're multiplying our local scale by minus one and whatever the value is of this, we are setting as our x axes. So finally, let's set transform dot local scale equal to our local scale variable. This might be a little bit confusing, maybe replay the last 30 seconds odd. The more times you hear it, it does make a little bit more sense. But this is not enough as we've made this function, but we're not calling it anywhere. So just as we reach our point and just before we switch the point, let's flip our character. Let's do that again here. So now I can press play in the editor and you can see I have this absolutely glorious functionality of our very evil enemy running back and forth between two patrol points. So that is pretty much the end of the video. I did want to quickly touch up on the fact that if you wanted to, when we reached our point, we could for two seconds freeze our rigid body. And before we set the new point, we could play an idle animation for two seconds and then set this point. And you could do this using a coroutine. But that is all I have to say on that for this video. If you do want to get more info on this, please do let me know and maybe I'll do a video on it or a video just for my Patreons. So feel free to let me know. But guys, I will thank you all very much for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe if you are new and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.